I'm scared. I, I think I'm falling out of love with Patrick. Isn't it uh, about time? Is the session over? Oh, you mean it isn't about time with Patrick? Um, I don't know. I believed I'd never stop loving him. And that if I do, there'll be this hole in my soul. And I wouldn't have anything to fill it up. And that scares you? What if he wants to come back? What if he did? What would you do? I don't know. Would you take him back? I don't know. Maybe. Hey, sue me. You know, couples do remarry. It's gonna be like quitting smoking, that all I do is talk about it forever and I don't do anything. Let me tell you something. Patrick didn't kill our marriage. He didn't. It's not over till I kill it. Yeah. And I can't. Living in time and feeling every moment. Do I walk into tomorrow and never look behind? In a perfect world, everyone's dreams would all come true. How will it all? Will the future hold? I wonder what will the future hold? How will it all unfold? I wish I. Approximately 10.45 p.m. on the date in question, Mr. Andrews and three unidentified Caucasian males were interrupted while defacing the walls and doors of Temple Beth Shalom and of desecrating its cemetery. Walter Jackson, the security guard who came upon them, identified himself and ordered them to desist. The group began shouting racial epithets at Mr. Jackson, who by this time was retreating in order to notify police. At that point, he was attacked with a metal pipe by the accused, who was arrested in the area 45 minutes later based upon Mr. Jackson's detailed description. Mr. Jackson told the police he heard his assailant addressed as Evan. How can you say that? I was nowhere near that place. Your Honor, given that Mr. Jackson, who is 64, may lose sight in his left eye, and considering the particularly vile nature of the desecration, the people request that bail remain at $25,000. Counselor for the defense. Thank you, Your Honor. My client was identified by an elderly man who was attacked from behind in a dark cemetery. Now, there is substantial question as to the accuracy of that identification. Furthermore, a quick perusal of the Los Angeles County phone books would reveal that there are thousands of Evans, both first and last names in the area. Now, the primary purpose of bail is to ensure appearance in court. Mr. Andrews is 20 years old. He's had no prior record of arrest, let alone failure to appear, Your Honor. Sorry, Miss O'Neill. Bail remains at $25,000. Next case, please. Where am I going to get $25,000? You only need 10%. A bill bond's going to post the rest. I'm an assistant manager in an appliance store. I make 400 a week. What about your parents? My dad's dead, and my mom lives in Florida. We don't exactly get along. I see. 
Miss O'Neill, I didn't do anything. I swear. Believe me. Please help me. I'm trying, Evan. You gotta get me out of here. You know what kind of people are in that place? Yeah, I do. Look, I'll come and see you in the morning, I promise. I promise. Can I give you permission for that? Can I tell you that? Lonnie, you're a big troublemaker. And so, okay, and so on this auspicious... Uh, Rosie, why don't you get a nice glass of Kool-Aid? Thank you, Lonnie. I would like to be the first to wish our comrade a healthy vacation in paradise. He should be missed. To Jeff. Yeah! Where's he going? To the Himalayas. To live among the Himalayas. To the Himalayas! To the Himalayas! I have a gift for him. Where the hell is he? Uh, he's about 7,000 miles away by now. He left yesterday. <laughs> We're having a going away party for a guy who's not even here? Well, he left early. He wanted to leave before Mercury went retrograde. <laughs> <laughs> but now, it's a junk food celebration. Oh, yeah. And to the first guilt-free, 100% pure, refined cane sugar in this office since Jeff signed on. Yeah! Oh, wait, wait, wait. And I would like to thank those among you who, on a moment's notice, provided us with this smorgasbord of culinary delights? To Hank for the barbecue potato chips. Hey. All right. Lest we forget the very wonderful Carol Kravitz and her marshmallows. Hey. Yes. Lonnie, thank you for the processed cheese spread. Hey. Cheers. Oh, and if I may, I'd like to take this opportunity to welcome the newest addition to our department. Right from Harvard Law School, two years, the editor of the Law Review, Mr. Udell Corey III. Welcome. I just hope he isn't as pompous as an old man, spreading around L.A. like he's the biggest trial Thank lawyer you, in the West Coast. He when is the biggest trial lawyer, lawyer in the West Coast. Yeah, but well, his kid isn't. Why don't you give him a chance? Maybe he's not like his father. It's a long way from Harvard to the LAPD's office, but at least I flew first class. Oh, huh? On the other hand, Thank you, Udell. Now, I would like to recite an excerpt or two from my forthcoming autobiography, Ben Meyer, the Mensch Behind the Legend. Excuse me, Mr. Mensch. Mr. Bigger Mensch is on line 15, requesting the honor of your homage. Ah. Hank, how about a song or two to mesmerize the crowd during my absence? Oh, well, 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 well. I don't know, I don't know. I don't know. That wasn't worth to me. I'll agree to have you fired. Yes! Oh. Yes! yes. <laughs> Oh, everybody, please, feel free to make yourselves unhealthy. Hank sings? No. Uh -huh. You learn something new every day. Around here, anyway. <laughs> Come on, Clifford, don't you find it a little hypocritical that a body whose sole purpose is to protect the Bill of Rights is issuing dictums that infringe on the rights of the very people it employs? Yes, okay, yeah, right, mm -hmm. fine. I will, Clifford, yeah. Yep, today. Right now. Yeah, okay, bye. What? It's a tuba, Clifford. Just expressing a little freedom. For the last time, Clifford. some not so happy news. Uh, I'm glad we're all together here. That was Clifford Dawson that was on the phone just now. And uh, we are being made to abide by the rules in the memo that was issued last week. You said you'd take care of that. That's what I said, Hank. I tried. And I lost. So as of tomorrow at 5 p.m., all personal wall decorations, including but not limited to posters, slogans, signs, and photographs, not having to do with the actual performance of the duties of a public defender will be removed from the common public areas and private offices. We appreciate your cooperation on this matter. Sorry, gang. 
guess the party's over. That's it? That's it. Better remove the flag then, Ben. Because it just became another country in here. Buenas noches. Merry Christmas. Feliz Navidad. Feliz Navidad. You're crazy. Está loco. Este loco. One more. Otro más. Otra más. To do business. Hacer negocio. Hacer negocio. It's cold. Hace frío. Hace frío. Today. Hoy. Hoy. See you tomorrow. Nos vemos mañana. Do you want something to eat? What do you got? Melon? No. English muffin? No. Doreen? I know. Do you still eat those? Yep. Thank you, Rosie. Nobody ever makes me breakfast. Oh, come on. I'll make you breakfast anytime you want. I wake up. I nurse. I read one page of a book, I nurse. I defrost frozen burritos, I nurse. And then it's time to go to bed. I don't have a life anymore. You know what you're going through, Dory? Postpartum depression. <gasps> don't say those words to me. <laughs> you and what's his face? Todd? Todd. I think you've got it all figured out, but well, you don't. I'm not depressed. This has nothing to do with depression. This is the reality of my life. Okay, okay. Calm down. Here. Here. Uh. Ah, here. Have this. You'll feel better. If you want me to babysit for you or not, I will. One night won't do it. For crying out loud, Doreen. I mean, you've already had two kids. What'd you expect? I expected my own sister to be a little more sympathetic. I am sympathetic. It's just I'm, I'm late. I'd love to sit and listen to your problems, but right I now... I know. You probably got another rapist to defend. Come on, Dory. I'm sorry I bothered you with my problems. You're not bothering me. It's just I'm late. Fine. 
I know you have important things to do. Call me if you ever have a spare moment. Come on, Rose. Doreen? What movie did you see? Does that matter? It's your alibi. I thought Lisa was my alibi. Exactly, Lisa Dodd. The girl with whom you went to the movies, correct? So what'd you see? Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. It was a cool movie. What show? The 930. That's why I couldn't have been at that stupid cemetery when they said. It didn't get out till after 11. Right. So now all we need is for Lisa to back up your story. Unfortunately, I can't get her to return my calls. Why not? I was hoping you could tell me. Is there a reason why she wouldn't want to help you? No. I don't think. Did you do anything or say anything that might upset her? Like what? Like who knows? I wasn't there. You were. Think. I can't, I can't think. This is crazy. All of it. Look, it's going to get crazier if we don't get some corroboration on your story. So come on. Did you, I don't know, get fresh? Fresh? Well, you know, did you make unsolicited advances? I don't know, maybe. Yeah, kind of, I guess. I, I asked her to come back to my place. She said no, but I kind of pushed it and we had a fight. When was this? I don't know. After the movie? Yes, and then she just got on the bus. You didn't escort her home? She didn't want me to. That's it? Yes. What else can you tell me about that night? Did anything unusual happen at the movies? Um, is there someone else who could possibly corroborate? The ticket taker. Do you know him? No, he was a creep. He made a pass at Lisa. I called him on it. He'll remember. We held up the line. Good. And the candy guy. Uh, we got a large popcorn and a soda. No ice. Well, I don't think that that'll... And five squirts of butter. That's pretty unusual. I'm, I'm sorry. I just can't think what else. You never know when you're just living your life that you're gonna have to remember the details. I'll be back tomorrow, around three o'clock. I want you to go over all the details of what happened that night. And be specific, it's important. I will, I promise. Thank you. No problem. Rosie, I shouldn't be here. I'll see you tomorrow. I need info from Evan Andrews' mother. She's in Florida. When do I leave? <laughs> as soon as Ben gets the budget increased to include airfare and hotel rooms. And which means never. Ah, Mr. Optimistic. Hey, in the government structure, the PD department is the armpit. Nice anatomical image. Hey, you want to hear an even more appropriate anatomical image? Ah, uh, no thanks. I get to look at one every day across my desk. <laughs> you know, the way you two fight, you might as well be married. Now that I got your attention, can I have your request, Captain? I uh, got a full book today. I thought you quit. I did. Hey, hey, hey. We've got an agreement here. Satisfied? Can you track down Evan Andrews' mother? He says they're estranged. I want everything about his childhood. Churches, schools, youth groups, friends, the whole profile. I'm basing everything on one witness who won't come forward, so anything you can come up with is news. Yeah, one problem. Calls to Florida. They just issued us a cap on long distance. I'm already close. We can't use our own phones? What are we supposed to do, send a pigeon? Too expensive. OK. Here's my credit card. Right. Why don't you just sell your Mercedes? We can all go down there for a three-week vacation. Why don't you just Ammo. Ben wants the walls cleared by the end of today. Hey, no problem. 
Why have the Constitution on the wall when no one pays any attention to it? There you go. Hey, I only work here, you know. If it was up to me, I'd rather look at pictures of Thurgood than a blank wall any day. Thurgood? It's a parrot. So, what about the guys? <laughs> Guess the Malcolm ain't going nowhere. Come on, Hank. They're just pictures. Take them home and hang them up. And not just pictures. You're the most contrary person I've ever met. You know that? This was not Ben's idea. Yeah, but he's going along with it, though, isn't he? He didn't have a choice. Like hell, he didn't. The Ben I knew 15 years ago never would have stood for this crap. He would have told him where to stuff it. That Ben had principles. This guy, I don't even know this guy. Besides, I don't see you going along with the program. I just took down the Constitution. Yeah, how about that? What, that little thing? It's on the wall, isn't it? I flew to D.C. with my dad when I was 13 years old for Kennedy's inauguration. My dad even got him to sign it, for Christ's sake. Sounds personal to me. I'll be right back, Carol. I want to take this stuff down to my car. You can set all the examples you want. I ain't removing a damn thing. You can resist all you want. You're still gonna have to comply, Hank. Yeah, don't count on it. This is one file cabinet, that is all I get. That's all anybody gets, unless you bring in your own. Fine. Then who do I talk to about ordering supplies? You go to the supply cabinet over there, and anything else you need, you buy. Well, who do I give the receipts to? Your accountant. What does this look like, L.A. law? When did they do this to you? During lunch. Rosie, you got to get me out of here. They won't leave me alone. Damn it, I requested that they not put you in general population. Can't you get me transferred? Look, Evan, I will try everything I can. I have to petition the judge to have you transferred to the soft tank. What's that? It's where they put the inmates who are more vulnerable. Please do it. I'm scared. I'll get right on it. I feel like this is all a bad dream and I'm never going to wake up. I came out here to be on my own. And now I am. And there's nobody to help me. Yeah, there is. I agree with you in principle, Hank, but what the hell am I supposed to do? Fight it. You're a fighter, at least you were. I still am. I just choose my battles more carefully Yeah, well, now. what does that mean? It means that there are things we need, Hank. Need. We need more space. We need better equipment. A 25% increase in budget. If I take a stand on wall tchotchkes, I blow the important stuff. It's a trade-off. Sell out. It is not. Well, why a... can't we get it all? Go for broke. It's not like we don't deserve it. Because Clifford's not going to buy it. Well, how do you know if you don't try, if you don't push? Test the limits. Like Malcolm said, if you don't demand a change, if you don't refuse to live without it, it never comes. Excuse me, I don't mean getting a little carried away about no, this. No, 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 uh-uh. There was a time when you never would have taken this, man. I mean, what's up, you, 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 you getting soft sitting there in that office of yours? You forget what it's like in the trenches? How? How can I forget? They're my responsibility now. I no longer have the luxury of grandstanding every issue that comes along. I have to look at the big picture, Hank, you don't. Just take that stuff down, Hank. Today. Yeah, as a master boss, man. Anything else? Yeah. You better watch that cut.
thought about it. And I'm ready to accept your apology. What apology? The one you forgot to call me with. I know you're busy, but you only have one sister, not to mention one niece named after you. So here we are. Dory. What am I supposed to be apologizing for? My job? My life? Your baby? Yes. No. Oh, shut up. Here, let me have her. Yes, oh, yes, sweetheart, yes. That's right. His mommy's so crappy. Yes. I always used to think I was the wild one and you were the safe one. You were the wild one. You were doing it before I even knew what it was. Yeah, look what it got me. Leaky boobs, a bad back, and a non-existent sex drive. Oh, come on, Dory. You got a great life. Well, thanks. I feel much better. Rosie, I used to feel like I could talk to you about anything. You can't. No, I can't. I feel your impatience with me. Dory! No. Let me finish. I know you're sick of hearing about my problems. I know they sound trivial compared to what you see every day, but that's my life. Trivial? I don't think they're trivial. I don't. Sometimes I just have a hard time relating, that's all. I don't know what it's like to stay up with a baby that's been crying all night, any more than you know what it's like to walk into a jail lockup. You're right. Does that have to create a wall between us? No. Look, maybe I do have a hard time listening to some of your problems. I don't know. Maybe they make me feel the lack of something permanent in my own life. That's not my fault. You're either there for me well, you're not. And right now, I really need you to be there. Sometimes you're the only adult I converse with all day. I feel dull and lonely and left out of life. Ah, oh, Dory, you are life. Come here. Pete! Hold on. I've been trying to reach you all morning. Oh, I'm sorry. We're under the gun. They laid off Tommy and Frank, and George and I had given up the caseload. I get O to S. Congratulations. What does this mean? Just what it says. Lisa Dodd's parents are pit bulls. They can't get near her house. She works at a jewelry store. I know that. You try her there? Yeah, I tried her there. But she wouldn't talk to me. Damn it. What about the movie theater? Oh, I haven't had a chance to get there yet. Well, I'm off to the top pits, huh? Don't ask. What do you need? Photos of the desecration of the cemetery, close-ups and overviews, as soon as possible. Huh? I want to look at them over the weekend. Thanks. Oh, wait, 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 not so fast. You know, with this overload, I can't get your photographer till Tuesday. Oh, come on. Well, maybe Monday if I really try. Never mind. I'll take my own damn pictures with my own damn camera. How do I get to Temple Beth Shalom? Uh, south on Alameda, east on first, about a mile and a half. You can't miss it. On a bet. San Pedro's quicker. Trust me, it's been my temple for 12 years. You going there now? Well, unless the budget's been cut back further and you want me to take out the trash. Well, come on, I'll drive you. I was gonna grab a bite of lunch, but I'm not hungry anyway. I'll get a little spiritual nourishment instead. Great, let me get my stuff. Okay, thanks, Carol. I'll come back and talk to you later. You dump that on the way out.
know, 3,000 years ago, if one could have looked into the future and asked oneself, who's going to survive the longest? The Jews or the Babylonians? The Jews or the ancient Romans? Or the Egyptians? One would not have bet on the Jews. But we're still here. Yeah, I'm fine. I'm fine. Why don't you take your pictures and I'll go for a walk? my son's age. What am I talking about? I'm much younger than that. I had to wear a yarmulke every day. It was okay in my neighborhood. It's mostly Jewish immigrants, some Slavs, a lot of kids like me. But once a week, I had to go cross town for my piano lesson with Mrs. Schliwe. Meant a lot to my parents to be able to give me that privilege. So every Thursday afternoon after school, I get on the bus and go uptown. And I had five blocks to walk to Mrs. Schliwe's. I can't tell you how I dreaded those five blocks. These kids would wait for me, and they would call me names, throw rocks at me, beat me up, all because I was wearing my yarmulke. I finally got smart and just took it off and shoved it in my pocket while I was still on the bus. That was all it took. After that, they didn't see me. Well, I thought I had it all figured out. It took me 25 years to realize that I let a bunch of hateful kids take my faith, my identity away from me. I always wondered about the young Ah. Uh, I wear it for two reasons now. It gives me constant awareness that there's something above me. God. Also lets the other people know that I'm very proud of who I am. And now, Rosie O'Neill, I am going to go home and have Shabbos dinner with my family. Shabbos? Shabbos. Shabbos. It starts at sundown. Are you hungry? <laughs> Is the Pope Catholic? <laughs> 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 Mikolo wami me vesha basko chekho beavo uvrot sain in khalto nu baruchato adshem mekade ishasha bos Blessed art thou, O Lord our God, King of the universe, who brings us bread from the earth. Take peace, give to your brother. Mm. Now we eat and enjoy. <laughs> mm. So, Rosie. Ben tells me that you're defending the kid that's accused of defacing the cemetery. Harry? He tell you his mother's buried in that cemetery? No, he didn't. Let's just drop it, Harry, okay? Maybe it doesn't bother you so much because your mother's tombstone wasn't one of the ones that was smashed or covered with swastikas. Bother me? Of course it bothers me. Makes me sick to my stomach. 
You'd never know it. You'd just go on being the consummate professional. What would you have me do? Go to pieces, huh? Maybe I should have the Andrews kid strung up because he's a Gentile. Innocence notwithstanding. Is that what you want? I'm not saying that, Ben. Then what are you saying? Just... It hits close to home. Yeah, I know. This looks delicious. This is your lucky day. Funny, I looked up and I saw you and I thought just the opposite. Be nice to me. I'm about to offer you the best deal you ever had. Really? You retiring? Evan Andrews testifies against the rest of that gang. We reduce the charge to malicious mischief and recommend a light sentence. With luck, he's back selling stereos in six months. Forget it. Hey, this is your country, too. I am trying to make an example out of as many members of that little fascist mafia as I can. Listen, I want them. Your kid means nothing to me. My kid is no Nazi. Hey. If you're smart, you'll think twice about this. Spit and vinegar won't get you by on this one, Rosie. No, but it's a hell of a start. Sorry I'm late. Car trouble. I need a new fan belt. I need some good news. Well, if you believe in the philosophy that no news is good news, you're sitting pretty. Great. Let's see, the, uh... Ticket taker denies having had an argument with anybody. Of course, what else is he gonna say? Yeah, I got into it with one of the customers. The guy was nervous when I put it to him. It looked like he really needed the jab. What about the popcorn guy? Well, if he had a nickel for every time he squirted five butters. All right, he'd be sailing on a yacht. 50 footer. So? So he's an average kid who spent an average night in an average movie. He'd been better off having mooned everybody from the top of the cash register. At least they'd remember him. Unless you had an average butt. Hi, I'm looking for Lisa Dodd. Thanks. Lisa Dodd? Yeah. I'm Rosie O'Neill. I'm from the Public Defender's Office. I told that other guy I don't want to talk. I know you're frightened. This is a controversial case. My parents don't want me involved with any of this. But you're the star witness. I don't want to be. Look, if push comes to shove, I'll have you subpoenaed. That means you're going to have to come to court. Why don't you just talk to me now? A terrible crime was committed that night, and you know what really happened. Lisa. Our judicial system counts on people taking responsibility, and if they don't, the system breaks down, and innocent people can get hurt. I'm not trying to cause you any trouble. I'm just asking you to tell the truth. Lisa. Lisa. Lisa? What, what do you mean? I talked to her myself. She simply won't testify. Can't you make her? Well. I'm going to ask for a continuance today and then have her subpoenaed. Well, how long will that take? We're going to serve her immediately. Then hopefully at that time, her parents will encourage her to do the right thing. Listen, Evan, are you sure? Wait a minute. Th there she is. All rise. Court is now in session. The Honorable Robert Beller presiding. What the hell is going on? I don't know. Your Honor, a witness is present at this time who can offer testimony. Objection. The defense was never notified of any such testimony. Your Honor, this witness, Lisa Jean Dodd, came forward literally an hour ago. There was no time for the proper disclosure process. The people request a continuance of two days to interview Ms. Dodd. Mr. Watts, I came here to begin a trial, and I'm going to begin a trial. You have 30 minutes. This court is recessed until 2.45. What are you doing with him? Evan. Oh, she's going to make up a bunch of crap to tell them. 
I'm gonna tell them the truth. And I'm gonna tell them how you all threatened me and that you were there that night and not with me. You bitch! This is still a court of law. You can't scare me anymore, Evan. And neither can your weirdo friends. This isn't fair. She can't just come in here all of a sudden. I'm warning you, young man. I'm going to hold you in contempt. I hold you in contempt, nigger! You dumbass black bastard, you shouldn't even be up here! You take our jobs, you steal our money, you infest our neighborhoods. Don't you understand, Rosie? We're losing the war! People like you and me, we're becoming the minority in our own country! First she was a nigger, but now it's the spicks! The Jeffs, the gooks are everywhere, Rosie! That Jew temple is right in the middle of a white neighborhood! We should have blown it up with the only inside! This time we will! I believe this guy, Hank. He was so... So all-American? Yeah. You know, they don't all shave their heads and wear boots and chains. Most of the hardcore white supremacists in this country look just like Evan Andrews. Besides, even if you knew he was guilty, would you have fought any less for him? No. Well. Counsel for the defense. Your Honor, America is no longer alone at the pinnacle of economic success. We are no longer the most civilized or forward-thinking people in the universe. Made in Japan is no longer a term of derision, but a label of quality. Countries that we used to consider backward are now making stunning progress. People trying to cope in a world that is thus turned upside down become frightened and they begin to blame. They blame the blacks, the Latinos, the Asians, the Jews, the gays, the people in the arts. We live in a racist society, which brings us to Evan Andrews, a young man who has been indoctrinated to such an extreme degree of prejudice that his view of the world is profoundly distorted, so distorted that it could be compared to that of a mental defect. Although his case may not seem to fit neatly in that box to find his legal insanity, it's vital that we understand Evan Andrews in this context. Like the district attorney, I too urge you to send a powerful message. But not by punishing Evan Andrews, rather by treating him. Your Honor, our prisons are hotbeds of racial bigotry. Locking Evan Andrews away is not going to solve the problem. Instead, I ask you to impose an alternative sentence with conditions of probation to include intense psychiatric counseling, a sentence that would best fit Evan Andrews' crime. For example, there is a home for the Jewish elderly in East Los Angeles that is in desperate need of a janitor. Now, wouldn't it be more appropriate to sentence Evan to a thousand hours of service to the community he so greatly wronged? Wouldn't it be to the greater good to try and break this chain of bigotry? Try and break this chain of insanity? Thank you, Your Honor. I don't disagree with most of what you've just said, Ms. O'Neill. I just disagree with your conclusion. The defendant's application for probation is denied, and he is committed to the Department of Corrections for a term of six years. I'm not insane. A funny thing happened to me on the way out of the door this morning. I looked in the mirror to fix my yarmulke, and I remembered something that I said to Rosie O'Neill. I said that I wear it because it reminds me that there's something above, and that it shows that I am proud of who I am. It's a symbol an inspiration. Then it occurred to me that all the things and all the boxes that you hauled out of here were your symbols, your inspirations. Maybe not exactly in the same way, but in some way. So therefore, as a result, I return to you triumphant from a volatile negotiation with Mr. Clifford Dawson and I invite you to adorn the walls and desks as you see fit. Oh, 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 
One more thing, one more thing. I took the advice of a longtime colleague of mine and went for broke, tested the limits. Consequently, there will be a few more computers and a few more desks, thanks to a few more dollars in the budget. Aww. Aren't you ever happy? 